If you're searching for answers around your CPAP machine and potential dry eye, you have landed in the right place. For those who don't know, a continuous positive airway pressure machine, or CPAP, is a device frequently prescribed for treating sleep apnea. While a CPAP can be very effective at helping people get more oxygen while they sleep, those using this type of machine also have a much higher rate of dry eye, which is where I come in. So if you have a CPAP and now you feel worried, don't worry, there are ways to help prevent dry eye and treat it if it does occur and we'll talk about all of that in today's video welcome back to eye school with me dr. D where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty so you can have healthy beautiful comfortable eyes and give a little tap on that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest eye tips and tricks I have for you we know that the prevalence of dry eye disease has been estimated to be from like you know 6% up to more than 20% among adults in the United States but many patients are not diagnosed with dry eye disease clinically because they assume their eye irritation could be related to allergies or exposure or just some type of irritant. In other words, we normalize our symptoms of dry eye. And so then patients will oftentimes try to treat dry eyes at home with little to no improvement. But if you have sleep apnea and you're sleeping with a CPAP and you're noticing that in the mornings you have symptoms of dry eye disease, which can range from redness of your eyes, irritation, feeling like something's in the eye, we call that foreign body sensation. It could even be watering of your eyes that you notice in the mornings. Then you very well could have dry eye disease that's related to the use of your CPAP machine for sleep apnea. So if you're new to the world of dry eye disease, you may not know the symptoms to be looking for or what dry eye really is. So we are going to go over that in this video. I go over that in almost every video. So if you've been to my channel before, just kind of skip ahead to the parts specifically about CPAP. But dry eye is a common condition. It occurs when your eyes either don't make enough tears or for some reason you're unable to maintain a layer of tears to protect and coat your eyes. When there's this lack of tears, it results in inflammation of your ocular surface and damage over time. So we'll talk about the symptoms. You could have watery eyes, red eyes, eye itching. It could feel like a burning sensation in your eyes, feeling like you have dust or grit in your eye. It can even affect your vision and cause your vision to be fluctuating or blurry because when you don't have a, a nice even tear film, you're essentially looking through, I call it like looking through a windshield with water drops droplets all over it. So it absolutely can affect your vision. It can cause light sensitivity. It can also make your eyes feel like they're heavy or tired. And some people even will develop extra discharge like in and around their eyes. And there's other causes of dry eyes. So we know that the prevalence increases with age. We know that there's airborne environmental factors like dust, smoke, wind, and irritants that can cause dry eye. You can also have dry eye from wearing contact lenses or improperly cleaning your contact lenses. You can have dryness from allergies. I always say that allergies and dryness tend to live in the same house. So if you have always had eye allergies, you may be more at risk for dry eye and vice versa. If your dry eye is flaring up, you might notice that you're more susceptible to allergy season. You can also have dry eye from medications like antihistamines, antihypertensives, hormonal medications, antidepressants, and anti-anxiety medications are notorious for causing a lot of dry eye. Autoimmune conditions, so Sjogren's syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus are all connected with dry eye. And even other health conditions like diabetes, psoriasis, rosacea is a really big one. I made a whole video about rosacea here here, irritable bowel syndrome and even vitamin A deficiency have been linked with dry eye. And then we have some eye conditions. We know that there's higher rates of dry eye in patients who have lash margin issues like blepharitis, which is an inflammation at the base of the eyelashes and the lid margin, and meibomian gland dysfunction when the oil glands along the eyelid rim become clogged, clogging the tear supply. And then there's also floppy eyelid syndrome, which is linked to both dry eye and sleep apnea. So floppy eyelid syndrome is when your eyelids don't close completely during sleep. Literally, the lid gets floppy. So in clinic, I can tell this by sort of, you know, just looking at the lid and sort of pulling it up and patients with floppy lids they're floppy. They're just loose. They're not opposed to the eye like they should be. They're not tight. And so during sleep, lids don't close all the way or they even flip open and then that leaves the ocular surface 
exposed to air and dries the ocular surface out. So that also makes eyes particularly irritable when the patient awakes. You can also develop dry eyes from a combo of all of those factors I just said and you know like cold weather, excessive screen time. Sometimes it's like an inciting event. You just have a really long work week, you've been on the screens a lot, and it incites this dry eye that you tend to not be able to get rid of. So we have talked about dry eye, we've talked about some of the symptoms, and you might at this point be thinking like, okay, I might I might have some of those symptoms, maybe I have dry eye, I know I have sleep apnea, I know have, I have a CPAP machine I use. I'm thinking this is it, but let's talk about the CPAP machine just a little bit first and how it works, and then we will talk about how they're linked. So CPAP machines provide steady, consistent air pressure, so oxygen will travel through your airways. However, many CPAP users will experience air leaks from their machines, which can cause a constant airflow over their eyes. This is a larger problem if your mask is either too big or too small, or is incorrectly shaped and doesn't fit well. Some of my patients will notice this after they've gained a lot of weight or lost a lot of weight and they haven't gotten their CPAP readjusted. So if it's something like that, you may just need to go in and have your doctor adjust your CPAP so it fits you right, so you don't have that extra airflow going over your eyes because that constant airflow is what leads to eye irritation, swelling, and dryness. And if you don't address this issue and your tear foam becomes compromised and your eyes become inflamed, it can become a chronic issue where you have dry eye all the time, not just in the mornings, specifically from the flow of oxygen. Often individuals who use a CPAP have other medical conditions like high blood pressure or diabetes. And these conditions are independently associated with dry eye as well. So it's possible that they're also contributing to your dry eye. So if you are feeling pretty sure that your CPAP is contributing to your dry eyes, you're probably wondering how then you prevent that from happening because you need your CPAP. So there's a few things you can do to ensure that you're treating your sleep apnea properly and also minimizing that risk of developing or worsening your dry eye disease. So number one is ensure a proper fit. The absolute biggest culprit of dry eyes related to CPAP use is an improperly fitting mask. If it's too big, too small or the incorrect shape, there could be air leaks around that seal. And this air is usually blowing directly into your eyes, causing dryness. To fix this issue, have a technician work with you at your doctor's office and make sure that you're wearing a prescribed fit. You may also benefit from replacing a full face mask with nasal pillows. They leak a little bit less, but I will tell you I've actually seen dry eye with the nasal pillow too. You can also check your pressure settings. So if you've messed with the air pressure settings or they were accidentally set too high, or if your kids or grandkids have been playing with your machine, a high pressure setting can result in air leakage as well. So to fix this, check your settings, relay them to your technician or healthcare provider. And if those aren't correct, get help adjusting them to the correct setting. The next thing is to clean your machine regularly. So if you've been neglecting to clean it as recommended, there could be a buildup of skin oils and dust and contaminants interfere with the mask seal causing air leak. To fix this, clean every part of your machine and mask as recommended by the manufacturer. If you moisturize your skin at night, opt for something with less oil. You can also add a humidifier. So make sure to fill a humidifier in your room where you're sleeping or if your CPAP has a built built-in humidifier, some of them do, and that will keep that airflow from drying out your mouth or nose. Too little moisture and you're dealing with dry air and that exacerbates the issue with the dry eye. Too much moisture build up around the mask can break the seal, however, causing air leakage. So try to start at that lowest setting and adjust until comfortable. And remember, you can do a secondary humidifier in your room to help with dry air as well, especially in the winter time. Check all the parts and make sure they're functioning and that you're not due for a part replacement. Replace that soft cushion that comes in contact with your skin every two to four weeks and the hard masks are supposed to be changed every two to three months. You also, in specifically for dry eye, there's a really great rubber mask. I'll make sure to link it down below. I believe it's made by iEco. That would be really useful to use with a CPAP because it creates a nice seal around your eyes. I also would recommend maybe using an ointment before bed instead of an artificial tear because it's gonna stay in the eye longer. Some patients don't like the ointment because of how their eyes feel in the morning. You can replace that with a gel. A gel is sometimes better tolerated. Depends on the level of your dry eye disease, but I think that lubricating your eye something a little bit thicker than a regular artificial tear is helpful and then you put that rubber mask on and then your CPAP and I know it's a lot it's a lot to sleep in all of that but it really really helps your eyes if you're struggling with dry eye 
So, I mean, we know that the studies have found the incidence of dry eye disease is higher in patients who have a CPAP. And even if you didn't have dry eye disease before, as a dry eye specialist, I can tell you that sometimes patients it's like an inciting event. You know, you start using a CPAP to treat your sleep apnea and it sort of kicks things off. It kicks off this inflammatory cascade and maybe you have diabetes as well or COPD or hypertension or something. And so it's just sort of this straw that broke the camel's back and you just, the CPAP pushes you over the edge and now you have dry eyes. So it can be just a very, you know, day-to-day -day thing. Maybe sometimes the air flows weird and your eyes get dry and it's just once in a while, but a CPAP certainly can cause you, sort of push you over the edge into having dry eye every day. And if that's the case, I would definitely recommend talking to your eye doctor because you may have floppy eyelids and that can affect all of this and your eye care provider can absolutely help you find the right routine for you. All right, so we did it. We answered the biggest question, which is, you know, does CPAP cause dry eye? And I think we talked a little bit about how it does so and some things you can do to kind of decrease that risk with your CPAP machine. Make sure to let me know in the comments below if you have further questions, but that's it for today's lesson. Class is dismissed and I'll see you next time. <laughs>